반갑습니다. 이번 세션은 5분 뒤에 시작하겠습니다. Welcome everyone. This session will be starting in five minutes. Hi, Brian. Hey, Daniel. So I guess we can, yeah, I can hear you fine. Perfect. Per so yeah. I guess it's, it's almost time so I can start and start it. First, we have to say in Korean, then English, okay? Um, sure, sure. Yeah. 안녕하세요, 반갑습니다. 2020년 스마트 비즈니스 엑스포에 참여해 주신 여러분께 감사드립니다. 발표를 시작하기 전에 몇 가지 안내 말씀드리겠습니다. 저는 이번 세션 사회자로 카이타에서 프레젠트 해장 직책을 맡고 있는 브라이언 트선 손지민입니다. 원활한 진행을 위해서 참가자 전원 음소거를 합니다. 발표 중에 질문이 있으신 분들은 채팅창이나 Q&A 창을 통해서 한글 또는 영어로 사회자에게 질문을 주시면 발표 후 질문 시간에 종합해서 사회자가 발표자에게 대표로 질문하고 답하는 방식으로 진행합니다. 발표 내용은 전부 레코딩하고 이벤트에 공유될 예정입니다. 
발표 중 여러분의 모습도 같이 레코딩 될수 있고 공유될 수 있다는 말씀 드립니다. 발표되는 내용과 슬라이드는 달라스 한인 상공의 의서와 한인 IT 연합회 카이타의 서면 동의 없이는 재사용하거나 공유하실 수 없습니다. 오늘 발표 내용이 필요하시거나 다른 분들과 공유하기를 원하시는 분들은 달라스 한인 상공의 의서나 한인 IT 연합회 에 연락해 주시기 바랍니다. 오늘 발표는 Build a serverless hybrid cloud using supersonic Java. 라는 내용으로 데니엘 오 님께서 발표해 주시겠습니다. 발표는 영어로 진행됩니다. Welcome everyone. Thank for all the joining you today at 2020 Smart Business Expo. Before we start, I'd like to tell you a few housekeeping items. The moderator for this session is um, Brian Sun, who is president at Kaita, Korean American IT Association. All participants will be muted throughout the session. Any question you may have, please use the chat chat box or the Q&A window to the moderator, either in English or Korean. The moderator will collect all questions and ask the speaker later in QA if time and permit. This session will be recorded and shared later. During the session, some of you may be included and shared as part of the entire recording. All content and slides cannot be used or shared without the Dallas Chamber of Commerce and Kaita's permission. If you need any content, or slide, please contact Dallas Chamber of Commerce or Kaita. Today's presentation is Build a Serverless Hybrid, hybrid Cloud Using Supersonic Java, you by Daniel O. Um, this session will be in Korean. Speaker, now you can present. Thank you, Brian. That is a fantastic introduction. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining uh, my breakout session. So first of all, I'm going to share my screen uh, before we get I started. Uh, where's my screen here? I think it's this one. All right. And I need to change it, the presentation mode. OK, hopefully everybody is seeing my presentation mode. OK, once again, uh, thanks for joining uh, the one of my breakout session. The build serverless hybrid cloud using supersonic Java. So maybe some people aware about the, what hybrid cloud is, and then so what Java is. So a lot of people. I mean, uh, I'm try I'm trying to give some more inspiration many uh, enterprise developer, but also uh, the student developer uh, to how to use the Java technology on uh, the building. Uh, hybrid cloud and build a business application. Even though many, many people uh, prefer to uh, know JS or Python or the, the other uh, program language rather than Java, because Java uh, seems to be pretty old technology, but that's not true actually. I'm gonna uh, give some evidence of why that's not true today. All right, so uh, here's my profile, uh, who am I? Name is Daniel o. I'm working for Red Hat as a technical marketing major, specialized cloud every application development and as an and DevOps practice rather than just solution. So I spent uh, more than uh, 20 years to give some inspiration to many enterprise developer, but also IT operation team did to build a DevOps platform and cloud every application development like microservices and serverless application. In the end, Every single enterprise company uh, wants to build their own agile and cloud platform, even though uh, high, even though the public cloud uh, consumption or on-prem uh, infrastructure. So, so this this is my mission. And out of Red Hat, I am also responsible for CNCF ambassador and DevOps ambassador to give you some more. Uh, evangelizing cloud native uh, functionality, cloud native architecture for many uh, developers and IT operation team. And if you uh, just a uh, question about myself and my specialty or Red Hat technology or open source technology, uh, just easiest way follow my Twitter. Maybe you can subscribe my YouTube channel and find the interesting uh, technical or even non-technical video tutorial, etc. Okay, let's get started. So. Just uh, take a one step back in order to understand why we need to think about Java technology uh, today and once again. 
So back in uh, 1995, just 25 years ago, Java was unleashed upon the world. So this year, actually 25 uh, years anniversary of Java technology. So at that time, Java was fantastic uh, to implement a lot of business application uh, around the world, uh, along with the new internet technology. And after a couple of years later, this is a de facto to maintain or build a new uh, BGC application on top of the JVM technology. So for example, so company, enterprise company uh, needed to spend more than uh, $500,000 uh, for, for us to CAPEX, I mean, just to purchase a new infrastructure and a software like a web server, application server and database, just like an MVC uh, architecture, but also they need to spend more than 80 grand every single year to maintain the application. It's a huge money actually. But so after Java technology came up and a lot of company uh, spent a lot of money to maintain the application based on Java technology. And then application uh, architecture standpoint, here is a de facto to build up your Java application to implement your business requirement. So monolithic application and like a three tier or multi-tier web server, application server, and database. And uh, you need to spend a couple of months to release a new feature along with the new uh, product lifecycle. And a huge memory footprint to uh, start up your application, but also you need to uh, take uh, maybe five minutes, even 10 minutes uh, to start up your application. But nobody care about that because once your application start up, and the first priority is reliability and scalability, not uh, high memory footprint. So once you start up, once your application start up, and no exception, no uh, some uh, downtimes happening uh, during the time. That is the uh, enterprise application trend decades ago. So in the meantime, after 1995 and the almost present day, there are a lot of outstanding technology was, were born. Like uh, uh, 2006, Amazon, first of all, uh, served the, uh, Am the public cloud instance, like uh, also, also known as uh, Amazon uh, EC2 instance. At a time, so a lot of startup company or a small company uh, not try to buy the infrastructure, just like I mentioned, $500,000, but they just pay to Amazon to use the uh, instance rather than uh, bare metal or virtual machine. And then 2009, Java huge change, improvement and enhancement uh, with the uh, Java Enterprise 6. I was went there to develop a lot of Java Enterprise application, uh, my ex company. And then after that, uh, 2013, just seven years ago, the Linux container was named the Docker container, was came up. It's a huge change in all your runtime environment, like a, a infrastructure layer. So at a time, so we have only two different type of the infrastructure layer to run your application. Uh, for example, virtual machine like a VMware or a bare metal like a IBM, but now you got some single uh, package container and uh, this container, uh, allows you have portability and immutability, immutability, which means you can run this application any environment from my local environment like a Mac OS to public cloud or hybrid cloud. And the, after that year, Kubernetes came up, it's totally game changer around the world. So now, so every single application, regardless of Java, .NET, Go, Python, all application can be running on any Kubernetes cluster. This is the default infrastructure layer to run your business application rather than single VM or single application server. So what happened with this new technology? So new application runtime for uh, build your business application can be, should be uh, migrate or opt in this te these technologies. So after these technologies, so things change in all every single enterprise companies. So now they're looking forward to uh, consuming 
resources from public cloud like a Google, Microsoft, uh, or Amazon, and then they just need to pay uh, the, the consumption. So, for example, a uh, pay as you go policy. I pretty sure a lot of people already aware know that. So, if you just spend my ten hours per this month, I just need to pay ten hours consumption of your resources, just like your mobile application. You don't need to purchase a lot of big heavyweight uh, infrastructure like a middleware or application server, and you don't need to spend $80,000 per month. This is a huge change. So what is the most important thing to use this new trend and technology? So first thing is, it's a small thing. Make, it, make them more smaller, smaller, and faster, faster. Okay, so you have a same application same functionality uh, to uh, kind of web application to subscription or a card transaction, but some application needed to 100 megabyte as a memory per frame. But the different application just 10 megabyte as a memory per frame. And a five side, okay, we have a one gig, but this application just needed to uh, 20 uh, megabyte. So which one would be better to run the same functionality but different uh, public cloud or even on-prem. This is all about your money, specifically after COVID-19, everybody is working from home, which means we spend more uh, resources like high natural traffic or uh, some memory buffering. So everybody doesn't have a super normal computer. Some people pretty old computer like uh, five years ago, the laptop and then Below level memory profile. So, with that circumstances, maybe you need a more small piece of the application environment to develop and deploy your application uh, to work with your company. So, here is the uh, cloud native Java stack, and with uh, maybe some people aware of the Microsoft application. So architecture, the Microsoft application, which means you can run the single business functionality. Uh, you can also containerize as a Linux container technology like a Docker or OCI format or just a Linux container. And then you can deploy this application based on CI CD pipeline, which means you can deploy this application maybe uh, two times a day or uh, 10 times per day or even uh, one day, uh, maybe one time, once, uh, once a week just along with your CI, 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 CD pipeline policy. For example, so Twitter, uh, they deploy more than 7,000 times per day. Amazon, maybe 24,000 times deploying per day. Pretty awesome. It's, technic it's possible because they have Linux container technology, they have a CI, CD pipeline, they have uh, like a container platform like a Kubernetes and OpenShift and also uh, Linux container technology. They already mingle this such a great technology in a one piece uh, to develop, deploy this application to the production environment. So this cloud native Java stack uh, allowed us to make that happen, but still that's not good enough. As you can see, there are center piece of this diagram. Java still provides a dynamic application framework and running on JVM. What does it exactly that mean? I'm going to take a little bit talk about that. Just one step back one more time to think about uh, what Java uh, is and uh, how uh, was Java designed and developed uh, for 25 years ago. So Java definitely designed for a uh, high uh, network throughput. Like uh, you need to a lot of transaction like a database or a so legacy system like a messaging driven, et cetera. And also, uh, which means uh, you spend a lot of money, I already mentioned earlier. And then the Java is designed also be to long learning process. Once you run your application, like a application server, and then there is no downtime at all, except for my, my, maybe operating system patch or security bug fix, except those are the cases. Your application should be running all the time, like a 24 7, 36 5. No exception. Even uh, your uh, IT operation team lead or CT CTO uh, doesn't allow it to do your downtime. So, this is uh, the first priority, and the, uh, this is uh, the uh, 
uh, one of the uh, critical uh, condition to maintain your Java application on your enterprise production environment. Yet yeah, still, sometimes the application uh, start up maybe 10 minutes or five minutes, five minutes to load maybe 100 uh, modules or functionality at the same time. But nobody care about that. Okay, we just start on my application. Let's take a break and take a, uh, some, uh, grab some coffee or some chat. And then after 10 minutes, okay, the server is all up. I have 25 servers on my production environment and all servers are up to serve a new application functionality. And we're gonna do that in after maybe next six months, maybe next year, maybe the Christmas holiday, something like that. But things change there because so all Java technology uh, was born uh, to implement the mutable system. Like uh, you just need to just a few application server like a JVM and then running on top of that. But this is really cool thing because if you already have some experience to play with the Java application development, you know that uh, when you build your application, Java application, you got a, uh, the bytecode, it's immediate code, uh, intermediate code, which means you can run that bytecode any app server and any uh, uh, app server on internet environment. This is a really cool thing 25 years ago, but now the runtime is not a mutable any longer. It's immutable infrastructure like a Kubernetes. So every single application package one single container, Linux container. So Linux container is kind of some binary file, package one file, and then you can run that file any environment, Linux system, Windows system, and a Mac OS, even local environment in the production environment. You don't need to change anything. It's already complete package file to run any time, anywhere. So this is a huge change for uh, your application uh, development cycle. So, so Java is not good at because Java was born 25 years ago, which means there are a lot of hurdles to um, make fitting in uh, Kubernetes technology and container technology. So here, just so uh, I want to give you some the the hidden truths of why Java is not fitting container technology. As you can see, so the red box is a Kubernetes container platform. It's a new orchestration, container orchestration, orchestration platform to manage your maybe hundred or thousands of your container pod. And then the blue box means uh, the same worker node that you can run your application with the same resource density. But as you can see in the left side, the Java is only you can uh, run four application pods, but the Node.js is double time eight application and Go is maybe uh, 20, almost third times. So this is uh, the one of the evidence. So many, many developer to uh, try to run Node.js or reactive JS, like a JavaScript technology, but also they're really looking forward to uh, studying a Go rather than Java because, oh, this is a new technology. Java is a pretty old school. It's, uh, it's, it's almost dead language, right? Then the Node.js Go is a pretty awesome for uh, developing so AI, ML, artificial intelligence, or a machine language, or some more cloud native stuff. So this is the reason why people saying that. So this is a very interesting survey. Uh, the New League uh, take this survey uh, early this year. So as you can see, only six percent the prone the the, the awesome developer just looking forward to using Java to uh, develop the serverless application on Amazon. So a few years ago, uh, people thought about serverless application can be very uh, unique use case, like a standalone application and then very small application and not mission critical application, but things change that. Any application can be, should be changed to serverless application anytime because any application doesn't need to uh, run on all the time. So use your experience perspective. You can go to specific web page and then, and then when you go to different page, the previous page doesn't need to 
uh, serve any longer to you, which means that the application can be idle or can be hibernate during that time. So this is the reason why uh, the server list is a new trend or new, uh, uh, the new capability to build your application. So a lot of architect or a lot of enterprise developer looking for the which application program language would be perfect for serverless application plus event driven application. And luckily we have a lot of tools, framework and project. Uh, this is a lot of good landscape or a serverless landscape in a CNCF uh, the foundation. And as you can see, there are a lot of tools and framework and manages the platform like uh, Amazon Lambda or uh, on-prem uh, on manageable platform like the Kubernetes, et cetera. So what is your problem with that in that things? Too many choices. If you, uh, so let's say uh, you got a chance to make a decision uh, to find the, the right tool, right framework to build your serverless application. But you know what? Every single enterprise company uh, try to uh, move forward to hybrid cloud rather than a single vendor's public cloud, which means they, uh, they don't want to avoid vendor locking technology, but also uh, more flexibility to deploy your business application. So same application can be deployed uh, multiple cloud in infrastructure like uh, Amazon, Google, different region, different availability zone, and the, from on-prem to public cloud, like a hybrid cloud. So all mingled technology uh, should be considered when you build new cloud strategy. So, but most, imp most hardest thing to make that happen, too many choices. So, and you need to compare an A or a B or B or a C and a C or a D and okay, let's go back to A, a and D once again. So this is really hard for a lot of enterprise companies. So, but in the meantime, Java actually tried to a lot of innovation stuff. So they uh, try to make it smaller to uh, uh, optimize in the Linux container technology, but also they created new uh, garbage collector to make it some high performance like a Shannon the war. And also there are some multiple uh, platform environment. Uh, they try to develop multiple platform environments such as Android and then uh, the different uh, Java runtime, etc. But still not good enough for us. So we need something different. So let me uh, talk a little bit about the Quarkus. So Quarkus is a little bit uh, awkward word term to many people. So this is a, a, a two separate uh, words. Quark is from physics, like a quantum. It's a very small, tiny thing. So because of people saying Quarkus supersonic subatomic, I'm gonna show you why we call that. And us means just us and engineering things. So. Everybody engineering people try to uh, make something smaller, tiny, and lightweight. This is a trend along with the microservices of cloud every app, cloud every architecture, whatever we call, it. but um, this is a trend on a hybrid cloud uh, strategy. So Quarkus is a 100% open source project uh, invented by Red Hat, but there are a lot of company and a lot of uh, open source developer uh, join this project and make it uh, better and greater uh, last one and a half years. And the Quarkus allowed us to develop cloud-enabled microservices and design a serverless application on top of the Kubernetes cluster. So as you can see, uh, we have optimized and cloud-enabled Java stack uh, based on Quarkus. And you can see so any Quarkus uh, application is actually Java application. The Java application on Quarkus can be changed to serverless at any time without any restriction. And then you start up like a millisecond. I'm gonna show you uh, this cool stuff uh, in the next live demo. And then uh, this is the, how the, the uh, traditional Java working, but I'm gonna show you that in a live demo as well. And one more thing is Quarkus, the beauty of the Quarkus 
actually you have a two option to uh, build your application from like a traditional way, uh, create your Java application and then running on top of JVM technology. But also you can have a native compilation based on ahead of time uh, compilation strategy. And then you can run that application without JVM, just like an executable binary file, like a Go or Python, et cetera. And also Quarkus uh, provide the funky, I love uh, this name, by the way. Quarkus funky uh, is a new serverless and a fast strategy. Uh, it aims uh, to provide the standard uh, portable Java API for developer to write a function and deploy that function across multiple uh, serverless platform. As you can see, once you, I mean, once Java developer uh, create one single function based on this functionality and then deploy multiple uh, fast and a serverless platform without any changes, maybe some little bit tweaking thing like uh, uh, you need to put your some uh, the target environment, like uh, this is of deploying it to Azure or on my on-prem Kubernetes cluster or uh, Amazon Lambda. This is just some configuration, but you don't need to change any of your application code itself. So I'm going to stop talking here. So let's try uh, jumping into my demo environment. Okay, so I'm going to maybe make it bigger. So here's my local environment of VS Code, Visual Studio Code. And there's a, several ways to uh, get started to developing your purpose application. And then uh, this is the one of the way you can install or add extension Quarkus tool on your the, any uh, ID tool like a NetBeans or IntelliJ or VS Code, Eclipse, whatever you need. And then once you added your Quarkus tool, you can uh, create your Quarkus project uh, directly, just like this. And then I just create a Quarkus project and you can select the Maven Gradle as a, the packaging tool. So I'm pretty old guy, so I'm gonna use the Maven tool today. And then uh, here is my group ID, me, Daniel, and then the project, uh, the artifact ID, the summary demo, and the project, uh, the version and project name, I'm gonna just using uh, default variable. But one thing is the Quarkus will generate the, the sample application to export the RESTful API. As you know, the cloud native application, but also Microsoft's application uh, must export the RESTful API. That's is a vulnerable uh, characteristic or 12 factor in a Microsoft's uh, characteristic. Okay, here's a sample application. I'm not gonna add any extension. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what extension is, just a little bit later. So I'm gonna save in my file, my temp directory. Okay, here we go. Let's try to uh, be one more time. Hopefully you can see my environment. Okay, so here's the Maven project. So if you have a uh, Daniel, to, yep. Sorry for I think it still shows your slide. So. Um. Oh. So I changed that actually. You can see my the slides there. Yeah, can you stop and start sharing just quick, and maybe that will work. Hmm. Weird. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing in there. Try to share my screen. Oh yeah, maybe I need to change it to where it's the desktop. Okay, I need to share this one. All right, can you see my screen? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah okay, perfect. Okay, so if you have some experience to play with the Java application development based on Maven project, maybe you are familiar with the Palm XML. This is a structure how to define your all application uh, capability. Uh, for example, data transaction or um, uh, messaging broker or uh, some RESTful API exposure or some unit test or security, et cetera. All capability uh, distinguished by dependency and this library already pulled down my local environment. So here is the REST easy uh, RESTful API application and unit test, et cetera. And when you go to uh, our application grid or resource, as you can see, this is a sample application already generated. As you can see here, the rest is hello, this is a rest endpoint. And then the, when you 
access the endpoint, we got to return hello, just like hello world. Very simple. In the first step, let's start to this application. So I'm going to uh, open a uh, terminal window and I'm going to use the Maven command line. I'm not going to use any uh, specific thing, but there is just some keyword like a Spring Boot uh, call alone. And then this is the Quark dev mode. So Quarkus dev is one of the beauty of the Quarkus. Uh, this, uh, sorry, Maven Quarkus typo dev. So this is one of the beauty of the Quarkus. So the Quarkus uh, dev mode allows you to uh, have live coding functionality. So what the live coding means, I'm gonna show that in cool. So let's try to split a uh, terminal window and uh, try to access to uh, default port 8080 and then let's do easy, hello. And now you gotta see hello, just like the our enter code here, right? And then, so let's say I am Java developer. I need to change my code from along with some bug fix or uh, application enhancement like a business requirement. So let's say change to uh, hello, welcome. Uh, let's say uh, virtual uh, expo 2020. I'm gonna just save a file and then let's try to uh, access Ample one more time here. And then we got some, the new outcome here. So welcome virtual expo 2020. But in the meantime, I didn't even, I didn't even try to recompile this application and rebuild and repackaging and restart this application re without redeployment. So, but that those, that task is a mandatory for developer every single day. So this is a live coding means. And, and then this feature uh, in the end, uh, increase developers productivity. And then I totally uh, sure uh, this feature make our developer happy for that. So this is a, just a fun part. So now we're gonna to uh, create uh, this app, change this application to function. But for that, so every, most of the modern application and Microsoft's architecture have the CDI capability, I mean, dependency injection, which means the developer uh, don't need to handle every single uh, your application invocation or networking flow. But rather than that, instead, the framework like a Spring Boot or Quarkus uh, handle for developer. So for example, in order today, we're gonna to add the CDI, context to dependency injection, but Quarkus luckily provided that functionality by default. So in order to do that, let's try to uh, add a new uh, folder here and to create a new uh, uh, Java class and one other the service Java class here and you try to uh, make this application working in an old application scope. You know, it's a simple uh, method here, like a string and you know, let's say greeter and string, so name. You know, we're gonna pass down this name uh, and you know, return welcome and the name. And for a uh, hybrid server risk development uh, using uh, like a with Quarkus. Quarkus. All right, I just save a file uh, to create a new uh, the data, the dependence injection. So in order to use that, we're gonna uh, inject uh, in our resource file such as inject here and greeter service and the name is service here. Okay, so proper to use this service injection in our the cloud native application. So as you already mentioned earlier, Quarkus provides a funky extension like a uh, new capability to 
uh, evolve your existing microservice application into serverless application. So in order to do that, we need to add a uh, Quarkus extension here. Try to funky HTTP binding and automatically uh, add your the Quarkus extension. When you go to Palm XML, you can find a new dependency just edit it automatically. This is one of the cool stuff. And go back to here. So we not we don't use to uh, this uh, annotation like expose URL any longer. We don't need to use any longer because funky make it happen. So just delete that one. And then we're gonna just delete all. And using the funk annotation. And delete all. Okay, so the code is pretty simpler rather than existing one. So some people assume that maybe uh, when we change our existing Microsoft application to serverless function, okay, maybe it could be very complex, but turns out pretty simple, right? And then let's try to access to one more time, 8080, and then the funk and the funk annotation uh, allowed us to use endpoint, like a function name uh, with the uh, exactly same name over your method name. So in this case, uh, when you access the endpoint, it's a method name like a hello. So we're gonna endpoint the hello, and then now we got an endpoint welcome virtual expo 2020 for same functionality. And then this application already changed to function. Now we're gonna deploy this application to any serverless platform like Amazon Lambda or Kubernetes. So let's try to create a new another function here. So like a, once again, but you can also specify a specific endpoint as well as a function name like a hybrid. It's a different name from your method name in a public and a greeter and string name, because I'm gonna use the, uh, the uh, same, uh, I'm gonna use the CDI injection here, service and greeter not here, greeter and name. Okay, here we go. And string, all right, cool, okay. So we just create a new function here. So actually this application has two different functions. One is hello, the other is greeter. So hello is a return to static code and the greeter and the pass down dynamic variable like a, your name. You know, to, uh, the, let's try to access the, the new function uh, like my name, uh, Daniel O and the 8080 and the endpoint hybrid here. So now we got the hybrid and Quarkus application here. So let's, fantastic. Okay, let's try to uh, deploy this application Amazon Lambda. So in order to deploy Amazon Lambda, so we're gonna to uh, add one more extension, like a funky extension, but you can see here Amazon Lambda binding and once you add this functionality uh, into our local environment and then create a uh, go to one, uh, one property because there's a, you can deploy the one function into Amazon render uh, once, not two functions at once. So in order to that, we got a uh, Quarkus and funk name export. Uh, let's try to uh, hybrid here. I'm gonna save file and you can actually change that hello because the hello is a different function name. So, but we're gonna use the uh, hybrid and then just using the same maybe uh, uh, the command line and then we're gonna skip the unit test. So once you build your packaging application, so there are a lot of the uh, handy thing to deploy your application into Amazon Lambda using Amazon CLI, et cetera. But Luckily, Quarkus generate all your dirty job, like uh, they create a new best script. And then uh, this all include all Amazon, uh, Lambda, command line, et cetera. One thing you needed to do, just run this best script. 
we do want some parameter like a create, delete, etc. So let's try to go back to my Amazon Lambda here and just reload this Amazon Lambda page. And then there's no function here at this moment. And I try to, one thing you need to uh, pass down your resource name uh, is uh, uh, along with the, your, the Amazon credential. And I'm going to use my own and create it here. So I'm going to just run this app bash script on the target directory and manage that script file and create here. So it takes a couple of seconds to deploy this application to remote Amazon Lambda, but it sometimes depends on the network bandwidth or uh, the, the size of your application or complexity of your application. Okay, we just uh, successful and go back to uh, Amazon Lambda and just uh, load and we have a new serverless demo. And then let's try to create to a test event. So event name, greeter, and then the name is so my friend, the Bryant song. Yeah, and, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I created that file and the just test file. And then it takes a couple of seconds to uh, load, load up. And then now you can see here. So welcome Brian song uh, for hybrid serverless development with the Quarkus. So once you are uh, done your application test or even uh, running on production environment, but sometimes, okay, I don't need to do this application, which means I don't need to pay the money uh, for Amazon any longer. And then you just want the load, the delete uh, command line and it just do two seconds and then go back to function and the your application is gone. So pretty simple, but you can deploy the application. So I'm gonna uh, show this application, uh, showcase deploy this application, the same application to the up, the Kubernetes cluster, just before that, let me show you very uh, fantastic. And then in order to that, let's try to uh, delete this property and then uh, go to Palm XML. And I'm not gonna use Amazon Lambda any longer here. So I'm gonna delete this one. And actually uh, when you uh, uh, run a uh, clean, uh, package this file and then you got some thin jar like a job file and then you can run this application using Java command line and running on top of the JVM and then as you can see and target directory you can see here is my uh, Java application and then actually you can run as a local environment before you deploy this application as a function on your remote uh, public cloud and then you can run target and sub-release and job file. But I'm gonna open up my, uh, this is uh, my activity monitor in a MacBook. So just monitor all memory footprint. And I'm gonna search in Java. So I got some uh, developers and I have a lot of JVM actually on my local machine. And then just to make sure, so here are the 22, uh, 220 megabyte memory footprint job JVM and this is a 78. And after I run this application, okay, uh, something, 88. oh yeah. So we're still running on local environment. So I'm gonna stop here. And then let's try to one more time. So try to one more time and target 33 and Subarrays, subarrays, and job file. Okay, here we go. And then, so let's try it one more time. Maybe uh, make it faster. Okay, we got it here. And then we just need to uh, point a second to start up this application. So one of the uh, big reason to use the Spring Boot for many Java developers is super fast, but it takes maybe one or two seconds, but it's pretty faster than uh, Spring Boot and any other Java application. But also when you go to uh, memory for free, and now you can see here, uh, 107 uh, megabyte as a memory for free, to just run single RESTful API, actually two uh, function. 
on my local machine, 100 megabyte. Not bad, isn't it? And then I'm going to show you one more cool stuff. And actually, uh, you can run this app package, this application with uh, neighbor comparison, as I already mentioned earlier on my slides deck. So during the time, we're going to create the thin jar at first. And then after that, we uh, make the thin jar as an executable file, like a binary file. And that binary file will be running on top of the, uh, the GraalVM rather than JVM based on ahead of time strategy just like a Go and Python, et cetera. So what uh, would we do that? Because why we would do that? Because so in immutable infrastructure like a Kubernetes, you just need to uh, packaging once in the same application, but you have to deploy that application maybe a uh, thousand times as a part on the Kubernetes cluster for scalability and flexibility. But as you already mentioned, the Java has dynamic behavior, which means uh, when you run Java application behind the scene, Java tried to uh, annotation scanning and the parsing descriptor and enable disable some feature. In the end, Java tried to run your actual application with a thread or uh, process. But it's a, it's a really waste time. Maybe you have a hundred thousand part, you need to same thing repeatedly hundred thousand times. That's not an uh, uh, efficient way. So this is the uh, native executable file. You can package all that stuff at build time rather than runtime. So, and what happened at runtime is super fast. Okay, let's try to go to target tier three. And now you got some new uh, the executable file here. And you don't need to any longer the Java command line because this app can be running uh, without the Java uh, JVM. And now just run this application. And now you can see here, we just need to uh, 27 millisecond. As you remember the previously same application, same function uh, took uh, running uh, with its own uh, 0.8 second but now we have 20 milliseconds. This is the first time. Maybe when you try to second time, it will be faster than like at the 17 millisecond. And when you go to memory for free, so previously we have a 107 megabyte as a memory for free. And then now we got a here, uh, 7.3 megabytes. So this is a huge impact. So you don't need to run uh, JavaScript or Go any longer because Java uh, gives some more high performance rather than Java or even rather than Go. So maybe 30 times faster than or 100 times the faster than and 30 times less than memory for free. But uh, the same uh, functionality application. So when you go to HTTP hybrid cloud, and then you got the same application with the code, same functionality, but different performance standpoint. So, okay, let's go back to uh, my another Kubernetes environment. This is actually OpenShift container platform, the race version uh, 4.6 version based on uh, Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes cluster. And then here's the developer console and actually already package this application as Docker container and push it into Docker Hub. And also the Quarkus provide another extension like an OpenShift extension to packaging your Docker. You don't need to a uh, local Docker environment, but Quarkus just using remote Docker container engine to build your application. But skip that thing uh, because I don't need the time for that. Uh, okay, so try to container image here. And then, uh, on. and then we got here to, hybrid serverless application. And then one thing you need to do here, so Knave service, when you click on uh, your deployment type, this application deploy automatically serverless. Uh, this is one of the good feature of OpenShift container platform. And just click on that. And now you can see the application just click in the view row. And in the meantime, so application already pulled down and run. And then we just need to uh, six 
millisecond to start up. So imagine that you have the same functionality, but sometimes you need to deploy the same application to Kubernetes, but it takes two minutes. And then the worst thing is you need to maybe 10 minutes to scale, uh, make them scale out maybe 100 part, but you have just 16 millisecond to start up. And even though when you scale up maybe 100 part, you just need one minute to make that happen. Which one would be better for your uh, serverless application, but also multiple serverless platform to build your hybrid cloud. So when you go back to topology view and then click on the endpoint, and then, so I'm gonna copy uh, uh, this uh, route URL and go back to my local environment. And just to, here we go and I'll change it to endpoint here. And uh, this is uh, the actual, the remote uh, OpenShift cluster URL. And then because the, this application already scaled down to zero, the serverless application uh, will be scaled to down to zero if you, there are any requests. This is your own demand service. But in the meantime, so your application is just up. So if I try to call this endpoint once again, uh, using uh, the name, the Bryant and so on. And then just uh, let's uh, just leave it maybe next 30 seconds, this uh, uh, part will be scaled down to zero automatically. But just so we're gonna do this some fun part, actually one of the good feature of the OpenShift container platform uh, you can change it, your uh, the uh, the part uh, label like a quarkers, and then you can show that actually quarkers icon, which means you got a lot of the application at the same time on your topology, and maybe you sometimes need to distinguish it. So this application will be scaled down to zero, uh, maybe after twenty second in twenty second. So in the meantime, it will be, uh, and so yeah, it's just terminating and then it will be down to zero, maybe in next five seconds, I guess. And after that, uh, we will, uh, run the endpoint once again. So I'm going to make that uh, more better, uh, to see, okay, give me some more second uh, to scale down to zero. So almost there, um, okay, we just uh, just scale down. So as you can see, there's a no part here. And uh, when you call the endpoint and automatically, as you can see in the left side, the, your part is automatically up and then the return uh, is uh, the normally working. So this is a cool stuff. So maybe you can develop any application framework like a Java, Go, .NET, whatever you need. But so as an end user standpoint and a business uh, owner standpoint, which uh, application language platform would be better for your uh, the business consistency. Okay, so I'm gonna to wrap up uh, of this session today and I'm going to uh, change the present mode once again. So if you have a more workers application to uh, run or study for the, your next career or some maybe give some more benefit uh, or some or even you are creating your resume uh, for your enter some your company IT company of course. So here is the same uh, uh, the uh, project generator code.quarkers.io and then here's a binning URL, the try dash quarkers. So there are 100% uh, free uh, training course. You just need to web browser to interact with uh, the uh, training course. And also just, I already mentioned here, if you go to uh, my YouTube channel, uh, binny slash Daniel TV, and then I gotta post a lot of Quarkus uh, technical tutorial and a demo. Maybe uh, it'll be easy to understand how Quarkus works. Yeah, thanks for uh, attending my session. And uh, I think this is a quite a time.
Is there any specific question? Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Thanks, Jen Daniel. So I will take a, I think a no question were asked, but if anyone asking question, um, please type in the Q&A um, chat window and we will answer. 질문 있으시면 Q&A 창에 대답, 어, 적으시면 저희가 통역을 해서 예, 대답을 드리겠습니다. Yeah, I just want to, uh, I just, uh, just wanted to say one thing for specifically the college student uh, looking for some job in the IT industry. And then you don't need to find some new technology. So, so the, the trend, the, the IT trend and the new technology is already uh, arrived in hybrid cloud technology. And also uh, with specific business requirement like a AI ML and or some uh, or some uh, server race or some machine learning, etc. And then in order to catch up to that new technology, maybe you were thinking about, okay, I need to something new, shiny thing, like a different uh, stuff, but the Java still uh, gives some uh, good performance or better performance for take care of that business application, but also there are more than seven to 10 million Java developer around the world to develop business application every single day. So which means still most of the enterprise company uh, think about the importance of Java application for building their hybrid cloud and business application. So that's why I wanted some showcase. I mean, this demo showcase uh, how influence of Java technology is still in our enterprise environment. And uh, just feel free to reach out to me, Twitter or YouTube channel. If you have any question around Quarkus or hybrid cloud or CNCF or open source technology, for also some IT career, et cetera. Yeah, just let me know. Yeah, I think we have uh, no question. So, I think there's an answer, a question. I just say that, 안녕하세요, 좋은 강, 강어. Thank you, thank you, hello, and then it looks good, good um, presentation. Yeah, Thanks for that. Um, so, wrapping up, what is it? Boan? Boan? Yeah. Boan, you asked me. Security? <laughs> Uh, it depends on the, what kind of security uh, you stand for. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 그러면 그 어떤 어떤 보안을 이야기나 따라 따라 따라서 이야기하는지 따라서 아 클라우드에 대한 해킹 문제에 대해서 물어보시는데요. Like what was the security problem with the cloud cloud in general? I guess. Uh, this is a so general question actually, and then I just I want to say. Uh, uh, if you want to uh, avoid some security uh, breach pr uh, problem uh, to run your application, I mean, Java application on cloud, and there are a lot of some point to uh, break your application. But and the Quarkus already uh, integrated with the, uh, the security uh, third party uh, extension, let's say, uh, such as single sign on, and also there are uh, uh, OIDC connector and uh, there are a bunch of the security extension already integrated in a Quarkus application, which means uh, you needed to access the Quarkus application by RESTful API with the access token, okay, JSON, WebSocket, et cetera. So which means uh, only uh, uh, authorized the uh, end user can be accessed to, uh, to your Quarkus application, even running on cloud. And then there are already a lot of the layers of the uh, security uh, uh, issue on the cloud, like uh, infrastructure layer, like Kubernetes, or application side, or even system admin side. So maybe mm -hmm. I can uh, share some security uh, blog uh, after the call. Okay. 그러니까 그거 대니오님이 대답하신 거는 뭐 보안 문제 같은 경우는 벌써 컬커스는 거기에 대해서 이미 저기 다 어드레스 되어 있고 그게 Third Party Extension이든지 SOS, SOS Single Signer든지 OIC Connector든지 모든 게 이미 기본적으로 인테그레이션 되어 있고요. 만약에 컬커스 API를 그거를 익스포즈 할때 그거를 그거 그 허락된 유저들만 사용할 수 있게 
그렇게 그 보안을 그렇게 설계하면 된다고 이야기하시네요. 또 다른 문제 같은 분이 이런 it's like one person has the same question. 자반 코딩 자반 코딩된 좋은 기술이지만 지금 문제는 코딩 문제 보안은 소프트웨어 보안은 한계가 있습니다. 예를 들어 랜섬웨어 등등. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 that's true actually. So, yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, there were there was separate uh, perspective to uh, manage your security breach from the infrastructure layer to application layer. And then uh, Kubernetes and Kubernetes provide the security uh, uh, feature to access or authorize your infrastructure layer, but also uh, and there are some uh, data layer should be uh, cover of the security problem as well. So mm -hmm. actually, I'm not a uh, expert. I'm not an expert over the uh, infrastructure layer, but I'm really more focused on the application side. But I have to admit uh, what you mean. I mean, uh, there are more problem in the infrastructure layer or some application packaging and deployment that thing, even container technology as well. Mm -hmm. But one, I just just one quick one, real quick. So when you packaging the corpus application on um, Kubernetes, and you know, we recommend running on top of the RHEL, the Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and the Red, Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, uh, allows you to have some very higher security uh, capability, like uh, the SC Linux, and then uh, there are a bunch of the new security pro security. Uh, capability running on top of the container platform like a Kubernetes uh, to avoid the security breach. 마지막으로 같은 분이 대답하셨는데, I think one person asked the same question. If you want to, if you want to reach out, he want to reach out separately. Where is maybe best way to reach out to you? Oh uh, yeah, so uh, you can reach out me to directly by Twitter or YouTube and. Also, maybe if you can uh, ask the question to the Kaida, like a Bryant, and then he passed me down that question. Mm. We are working together in the same company, actually. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Recording的时候，大家的方法，大家的方法，大家的方法，大家的方法，大家的方法，大家的方法，大家的方法，大家的方法，大家的方法，大家的方法，大家的方法，大家的方法，大家的方法，大家的方法，大家的方法，大家的